Hello, everybody. Welcome to how your wealth affects how your health, excuse me, affects your wealth, and how to get more energy and get more done and feel great. And I'm here today with three of our Women Helping Women Stand Out Online members, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. They're all experts in this field, so we'll start with Beth. Beth, tell us all about yourself and what you do. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Beth Larson, and I am a certified high performance coach, and I specialize in working with ambitious women who want more from their lives. And more to me means more success, more joy, more passion, more energy, uh, more productivity, more money, and more meaning. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> a lot of mores in there. That's fantastic. a lot of mores. <laughs> That's great. And Kathy, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy Frost. I'm the founder of Forget Diets Forever. I've been empowering over 5,000 women to be able to simply create more health, happiness, fitness, and activity in their life without the worry or the guilt from dieting because when you diet, about 25 to 30% of the weight you lose is lean muscle, which right away decreases your metabolism and your energy and um, it's really almost next to impossible to keep it off and that's why 95 percent of people regain the weight they lose so i help them be able to be fit and active and healthy without a specific diet thank you kathy that is great yeah diet is not a not a great word it has the word die nope. in there right exactly. <laughs> <For a reason. laughs> the first three letters yes. are die. who wants to do that no no absolutely not and barbara tell us all about yourself and and how you um work in this field with health and wealth and feeling good <laughs> hi my name is barb and i am a ceo of creative space and we do there's a couple different portions to what we do so I'm an anxiety and trauma therapist. So I help with mindset. I help with um, trauma and how it blocks a lot of the, adds to the negative thoughts that tend to hold people back from experience wealth and healthy just in general lifestyles. And then we also help fix toxic workplace environments. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, that'll definitely affect your health and affect mm -hmm. how you perform if you're in a toxic environment. So this subject, you know, it's it's so true. If you don't feel good, and I know a lot of us are watching or not feeling good, you know, there's so many people are suffering from so many ailments, whether it's physical, emotional, or both. And this really affects our lives as entrepreneurs because, you know, we're expected to work long hours and, you know, put in the time. And But if you're not feeling well, it's really hard to do that. So I want to go around, we'll start with Beth, and just tell me your thoughts on this, um, some of the things you see maybe that, um, what are some of the limitations people are facing, you know, in trying to um, advance their careers and businesses, but being held back by health issues? Yeah, well, um, I was so excited when you actually had this topic, because it is like my passion topic. Um, I myself went through burnout about eight years ago. And that burnout was affecting every single part of my life. You know, it was a physical burnout. It was adrenal fatigue, brain fog, the weight gain that went with it, hormone imbalance, like everything was just out of whack. And I felt like literally like I had no energy. And um, I always used to describe it like I felt like I was dying on the vine. I mean, my, I felt like my life force energy was literally dying away, and it was impacting every part of my life, including the career that I had worked so hard for. It was being impacted. And so, you know, all those years that I put in of striving and working so hard, it was coming back to bite me in the butt. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't taking a chunk out of the butt at the same time. <laughs> it was just adding on weight. But uh, th that's why I'm so passionate about this topic, because your energy impacts everything, not only just your ability to do your job, but it is literally impacting everything that you attract into your life, too. I am a big person that believes our energy is what attracts um, back to us. And when you feel like you have no energy, you know, you're not just, it's not just a matter of not being able to perform your job, but your energetic vibration is literally so low that you're not able to attract in the high vibrational things into your life. 
That's very, very true. It's, you know, when you're not feeling well, that reflects back, right? It's your energy levels. And yeah. that's going to um, reflect back to everything that in your life, you know, and the quality of your life. And you bring up a good thing about weight gain and not being like when you're not feeling good, you can't exercise as much. So that maybe affects your, you know, your weights. And then you wind up being in a vicious cycle where you're feeling bad about yourself and beating yourself up. And Kathy, you, you know, you're the, the, uh, diet no more, more uh, guru here. So tell us, you know, how, how does this affect, you know, with um, people are experiencing any sort of health related issues and, and then they may, a medication may give them some weight gain. How do they deal with that? You know, with, with that, with having to deal with the, the psychological aspects of putting on extra pounds and feeling bad about themselves and that impacts their energy and everything else. Right. Well, I think it's really, it's just a vicious circle or cycle, I guess I should say, because as women, we're taking care of everybody, everybody, not usually ourselves, but everybody else. And we're the ones that get the last couple of minutes if there happen to be some during the day. And if there isn't, well, then it's tomorrow. And, and we get in such a routine, especially when we're busy professional people, that we just don't take those minutes to ourselves because of a lot of reasons. We feel guilty and all of that sort of thing. We oftentimes maybe skip breakfast or don't have much for breakfast or, you know, you work through lunch and, and then you're, you're just, you know, starving on the way home. And then you have to go through all of the things that you have to do in the evening. And you just forget to take and really nourish your entire self. And it's hard to help women be able to understand you just take five minutes, you know, start with something simple and, and, and eat a breakfast. And, and women are really, I want to say, intent and feeling like they know what they should do, but they just can't do it. Um, and typically that's not the case. Uh, there's simple steps you can take to just start your energy vibrating better. And, and it doesn't have to always be what you put in your mouth. I always encourage people, start drinking water. Because we need all that hydration. And as women, a lot of times we even forget to do that. But water helps. Our brain is so much water. And so if you can hydrate your brain, all of a sudden you come a little bit out of that brain fog. And and um, you'll feel just like you have a little bit more mental energy. And, and people are amazed when they start doing that. And then if you just focus on just doing simple things, eat more protein, eat, eat meals, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And you'll start to realize that, oh, I feel just a little bit better. And then of course, activity is important. And, and there again, people, women don't usually have time to spend 30 minutes to an hour in a gym. I own five health clubs for women, I understand that. Um, but I also understand that you can just spend five minutes at home doing something simple as basic as just a functional activity and start just helping improving your muscles just a little bit. And it's amazing how just setting yourself up to do little things, a couple of minutes a day can tremendously start to help you improve everything because we basically have to get the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and our physical all working together as one unit, not just focus on just the, the what you eat and how much you move, because it's a whole lot more complex than that. But that's Absolutely. usually what we worry about. I, and that's a really good point that you bring up and the fact that a lot of these things that maybe only take five minutes, um, but women are neglecting themselves. But if that were their child, that they would never not give their child water or let their child skip lunch. But it's for ourselves. It's psychologically we put ourselves, um, you know, down low on the totem pole. On the totem pole. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, Barbara, this would definitely fit into what, what, you know, your expertise is. Why is that? Like, the simple things that Kathy said that seem so logical. Why are so many of us, you know, do not value ourselves enough to take care of ourselves? Well, especially entrepreneurs and the people that are in the field for helping other people tend to be empathic. And so they feel like, well, my job is to help everyone else. And you can't do that if your bucket's empty. You can't do that if you're completely depleted. 
So it's super important to be to remember that <laughs> if you're not if your bucket's empty, there's nothing to give, and what you're given is probably not your best. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Beth, you want to chime in on this because I know you also work, you know, with women on this energetic level and you know this whole self worth thing. I think most people, if you're watching now, you know you. Put in the comments, are, is that you? Do you put yourself last in your family? Does your husband, your kids, your mother, your father, everybody come first? Your pets? Yeah. <laughs> I know I wouldn't yeah. not allow my dogs not to have their meal or, you know, but we do it to ourselves all the time. I think it's like a universal female problem that we're just caregivers to others and not to ourselves. So what do you say about that, Beth? Yeah, it's uh, it's dead on. Um, <laughs> I think that Kathy also <laughs> made a really great point when she was talking about the different kinds of of energy, mental, emotional, spiritual, I think she mentioned. Um, I, you know, I, I refer to our bodies as your personal power plant. Um, and if you think of what a power plant does in, in nature, all the different kinds of power plants that exist, whether you're looking at you know, hydroelectric or sun, sunflower, solar power or coal power, whatever it is, all those power plants do is take natural resources and transmute it into usable energy. Well, we have the same ability to do that with our own personal power plants. And that, those resources that we have available to us are mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and also environmental. And the, the environmental are the things surrounding you, people, places, and things. All of those things are either giving you energy or they're taking away your energy. And you know, when you think about having to protect yourself first, you know, put, put on your own seatbelt seat first or your oxygen mask first, you have to look at all of those areas and say, how am I protecting my power plant? What am I doing to make sure that my power plant is at full um, energy because I'm capable of generating more energy than I currently may feel like I have? That's a really good point. I like that analogy of the power plant, right? And it's you know, and, and and you shouldn't feel guilty if you need to take a nap and you need to rest. You know, yeah. you shouldn't feel, oh, gosh, I shouldn't do that because I'm wasting time. You know, it's almost like you're, when your cell phone, when the battery charger goes low, you need to put yourself on the charger, you know? Exactly. <laughs> right? Because then charge yourself up because yeah. you run out of that energy. And the, I like that that idea that we are power plants and that's, you know, that's a really good analogy and um, and all those different aspects. So, Kathy, when you see this, you know, so do you see a lot of times what we were saying about people having, you know, uh, psychological blocks towards, you know, drinking that water to getting that exercise? And, and you got to you put a really great point about the five minutes um, doing. You could really do anything in five minutes. And um, it, it, that really works. I know I've always told myself that, too. Once I got um, into exercise, you know, I said, you know what, I'm just going to do this for five minutes. And then it was 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And then I want to do more and more. So it really, when you just give yourself that little bit of a goal, you know, and you're able to accomplish it, I think that's really powerful. So speak more to that about to us about different habits that we can implement. Well, I think the first thing that we almost all have to think about is, is like Beth and everybody's saying, we have to nourish ourselves before we can nourish everybody else best. Um, and that's just hard for um, professional entrepreneurs, busy women to really grasp. I like to think of it as me first today, just a couple of minutes for me today. And maybe I find that a lot of women, if I can help them start their day with gratitude and a smile, you write three things that you're grateful for that you woke up this morning. I mean, it can be simple, the sun's shining or whatever. But if you start with gratitude, it's going to end up helping you be able to start to love and nourish yourself better because it boils down to being able to really love ourselves enough that we will put ourselves as a person of importance. And you know, our kids are important, our, our husbands are important, our families, like you said, your dog or whatever. But we have to see ourselves as just as important or a little bit more so, so that we'll take those first five minutes. And like I said, if you start your day by just having a little notepad, write down three things you're grateful for as you're getting out of bed. And then when you get into the bathroom, you smile at yourself. 
because smiling is proven to help improve your mood and of course the moods of those around you. So those two little things don't even take really any maybe two minutes at the max but if you can do that consistently don't worry about what you're eating or drinking or anything else for two days and just do that you're going to notice that all of a sudden you just have a little bit more energy and then you can start thinking about okay this is kind of interesting and now maybe i can start taking a couple minutes for me but you have to start little and i think that I think that we're all into this energy part and you have to be able to come up with your gratitudes even when you're way down in the pits of whatever you're going through. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, really and when you can start there and then once you get to taking just a couple minutes for you, now you can start to love and nourish yourself better in all the aspects. And I totally agree with Beth. When I talk about physical, it's not just your body or what, you, or what you're eating, but it's all, you know, your home, your living conditions, where you work, your auto, all of that sort of stuff. We have to, that whole environmental part has to all be a piece of who we are and how we're taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. Very, very good point. Go ahead, Barbara. I was just going to ask you to weigh in on that. Um, there's actually a psychological explanation for that. Um, there's been studies done on the effects of being grateful or positive mm -hmm. thinking, and the results indicate that a positive brain is a happy brain. It's a more productive brain. Mm -hmm. So if, if productivity yeah. is an area that you're struggling with, um, thinking of ways to be grateful is actually going to help with the productivity. It's going to increase it. And yeah. um, in fact, um, negative thoughts, negative actions impact the brain too. Mm -hmm. They actually, those negative thoughts form tunnels in your brain. And it's really hard <laughs> to retrain your brain to think positive. And so that's why re the repetition is so important. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. And did you say forms puddles in your brain? Puddles. Puddles. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, okay, wow. That is, yeah. that, and that, that makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah. you know, when we're thinking of, okay, th there's going to be the women who are just watching this and maybe just feel sluggish and low of energy. And, but we also have women with facing chronic illnesses who are watching this. And that becomes a little more challenging to feel grateful when you're in a lot of pain. I know, um, I've suffered from migraines now, thank God I've got them under control, but when I've gotten horrendous ones, you know, and it's hard to pull up what am I grateful for, but then you'll go on Facebook and you'll see somebody's got a brain tumor and you're like, my God, yeah, I'm grateful because, you know, I may suffer horribly with terrible migraines, but that person's, you know, got it much worse than me. And that for me always makes me more grateful. Now it doesn't work for everybody though. So I know Barbara, psychologically, there are people who really have been beaten down with like chronic conditions every day, just getting out of bed and to try to work is hard. What would you say to them? How can they find that gratitude? So even just being able to get up in the day, mm -hmm. just acknowledging the small things because um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot that the person's dealing with. Some people have cancer. Some people have a lot of hardship going on, right? Um, and as hard as it is to deal with those things, the more that you sulk on it, the more that you try to create your own puddle, pity party, whatever you want to call it, it's actually causing your brain to reform patterns that aren't healthy for you, not in the slightest. And it pulls, it's like um, a never ending cycle. Once you get that cycle started, <laughs> it's really hard to break. So it's like digging grooves in your brain that are for negativity. So what you're yeah. saying is to try to dig new paths that are gonna be you know, repetitious for positivity, which, which yeah. is great advice. Beth, what do you have to say about that for, for people who are really struggling with finding the gratitude when they're not yeah. healthy? I think it's really important that we don't try and whitewash a situation that somebody's going over, okay. going through. Um, you know, try, trying to just paint a positive face on something when they're going through something deep. It's really important that people are allowed to process their emotions and have those emotions. 
Um, it's just a matter of how do you how do you help them not stay there because it's not supporting and helping the situation to stay in those low level emotions. So letting somebody have the emotion, letting them some, um, feel it, but then I, I go back to this word transmute because everything is a transmutation. And when you can help them process the emotion and then move move their energy up by helping them find that next piece of gratitude. You know, what, um, not, not trying to put them in resistance though, because you know the saying, what you resist persists. So if you mm -hmm. pretend that what they're going through isn't real, um, then that's just really, you know, that's creating a resistance barrier. So again, letting them have that emotion, but then helping them move up in the, in the scale of things. You know, what, how can I get out of a victim mentality or mindset mm -hmm. or emotion feeling as though I don't have control over my situation and take a look at what can I control? Mm -hmm. Because it's that, that victim mentality cool. that will keep you stuck and keep you in the, the situation of not being able to do anything about it and get out of it. So, you know, there's very real things people are going through. Cancer is a very real thing. Um, MS and other types of diagnosis are very real thing, but they don't have to be, um, they don't have to be a death sentence. And so mm -hmm. they will be if you don't help them get out of it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, and I think what you're saying works for everything, not only serious dis disorders, but even people who, you know, or maybe feel overweight and they're so frustrated and depressed because of mm -hmm. it. Depression is a very real disease as well. So, yeah. you know, anything can cause that. And so somebody could be really feeling low and depressed and unmotivated. So in their business, with their health, with everything. So that is really great advice in order to um, try to lift yourself up, you know, out of that. Um, well, Kathy, do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, go ahead. Finish your well, the other thing I was going to say about that is that's why I look at all five of those different areas because I think it's important to help people see where they do have control. Because when, mm -hmm. when you're in a situation where you feel like you don't have control, it's being able to say, where, where can I control? Okay, so can I tr control my thoughts? Yes. Can I control my emotions? Yes, you can learn to control your emotions. Can I control my environment? Yes, I can control that. So like helping them pick out the pieces that they can control. So it gives, it empowers them with, um, with that level, which gives them a bigger energy boost as they learn how to control those things. That's very powerful. Yes, being able to have, being able to have control, yeah. even if it's small amounts to feel yeah. more powerful and, and in control. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's excellent advice. And I, I think, you know, so we're, you know, covering how we know there's a direct quote, you know, we've got our body, mind, spirit, emotions, everything affecting how, um, you know, our, our businesses and um, everything around it. And so everything is connected. Um, and so just going back to like, I'm going to ask Kathy, but this is a more practical everyday type of thing that I think everybody probably um, deals with is that like afternoon crash, you know, like, you know, you wake up, you're feeling kind of good. And then that after lunch hits and then it's like, phew, down you go. I think people mostly would say that's really, a, would you agree? Like where you want energy between like that, one and 5 PM? <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's yeah. where, that's where you need to start and think about what can I do right at the minute? because, um, and there's some things we can do to prevent it. But one of the things that we can do before we get to that afternoon slump is if we're drinking our water, we're gonna keep our brain hydrated. So we're gonna be a little bit, yep, me too, <laughs> a little bit less likely to have that. But it's important then that women make sure that they understand the importance of eating lunch, because a lot of women don't, or they eat very little. And the protein piece is the most important piece of lunch. And that's what women typically don't eat enough of because they've got this diet mentality. So they grab this little lunch and it's maybe a salad and maybe a couple pieces of protein, but you need the protein because that's what's nourishing your muscles and helping your muscles feel energetic. So you need the protein for lunch, and then make sure that you have a protein snack around three, between three and four, because you need to be nourishing your body. And if you have, it can be as simple as a handful of nuts. Um, it can be, I love the kind type bars, not the granola ones, but they have ones with nuts in them and things like that. Just have it simple or, 
It can even be peanut butter and an apple, but have it already there and know that it's okay to have that snack because now you're going to be fueled to get through the rest of your day. So it's all about fueling our body with the proper things. Water and protein, if women increase both of those, they will really start to find their energy increase. And it's amazing what it'll do for them. That's really so, interesting because we all do probably lack in protein. I know me being a vegetarian, um, probably more so than, than other people. Um, so it's really important to try to find, especially if you don't eat meat, you know, how to find those protein sources. Right. And, and there's a lot of good vegetarian proteins now. So I'm not saying yes. it has to be meats or cheeses, um, but nuts are even great. Nuts and are great, just, yes. Yes, but I think that because um, so many people live in this, what I call the old diet mindset, where they want to try and keep their caloric intake down, and so they see all the veggies and, and all of that, which we do need as being almost free food, but they think of the some of the protein sources like nuts, they think, oh, I shouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. But in reality, your body needs that. And so by having, having protein, and I'm not going into keto because that's a whole other thing. I, there's, uh, that's not something that I push. Um, but um, anyway, by having just, I like to say whole things. So real food, I'm into real food. If, if I can't pronounce what's in it, I won't eat it. Um, but, you know, if it has like nuts in it, that's great. But having that plan ahead, I say, you know, always be prepared. Be that Girl Scout, you know, always be prepared. So carry that um, kind bar in your pocketbook so that uh, when you're out and about, you can just grab it and you've got it. And you're not tempted to run to the vending machine and maybe grab something that's sweet because, that's what a lot of times people tend to get into, the sweet or the, the salt and crispies, you know, the chips and stuff like that. And, um, or they're thinking that, oh, I'll have pretzels. Well, that's only pure carbs, so that's gonna only make you dip further down. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to have that balance. And to me, it's all about balance. You know, that is really little, interesting. A little protein, little carbs, and then of course your veggies, but you need to balance them all out. And then don't forget the water. I always start women with water. I have a, um, I call it a, a hydration bot, but I remind them eight times the first few days to drink water throughout the day. So that, and they're amazed at how much different they feel just from the water. So water and protein. It's really interesting you saying that because what you're saying is that the simplest things we're overlooking is affecting our energy levels and we're yeah. looking outside for maybe more caffeine or, you know, yeah. uh, like, you know, the biohacks, like I love to see, you know, things, you know, with uh, like, oh, what's this no, no tropic, you know, like what can, but we don't go back to the basics, like basics. water and protein, <laughs> we want the right. magic pill, we want the limitless pill. You know, yeah, we want to be, yeah, pop it and be able to do. And I know, uh, Barbara, you were mentioning something about the brain. Were you saying something about nuts? How does it affect yes. the brain? Yes, tell Actually, us about that. Your brain needs needs nuts to to function. The healthy fats really? actually go yeah. to your brain. That's how it functions. Yeah. That's funny. The brain the brain needs nuts. That's kind of funny. Like you know, <laughs> but if you'll be nuts. <laughs> But yeah, the brain needs nuts. You remember that. <laughs> that is really interesting because the, and nuts, the, and it's, it's so true what Kathy said about people being afraid of nuts and people afraid of avocados, which I could never understand that. Oh, it's so fattening. I, if, I always believe if nature oh, yeah. grew it, you can't get fat off of it. I mean, if you were out of the jungle and you're eating avocados, nuts, and unlimited fruit, I actually had a debate with my older daughter about this. She's like, you always told us we can eat unlimited fruit, and that's not true. It has sugar in it. I'm like, but that's natural sugar. I said, if you were stuck out in the wild and you ate that all day, you, I guarantee you would not be, you know, have any weight issues. It's the processed right. stuff, you know, but people do. They, and these are the things we need, the good fats. Like, um, like there was a whole debate on coconut oil. And I was like, so, oh my God, coconut <laughs> oil is so good for you. And they say coconut oil is evil and it's horrible. And some stupid guy wrote that in the thing. And I'm like, that's like one of the best things, the coconut oil, you know, it's people that drink the coconut water, like the pure ones and the coconut on the islands, it's healing. I believe that anyway. 
But it's interesting, though, Barbara. So tell us more about this, what you know about this with the brain function and protein and nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the healthy fats that does it. It's, it's um, all the healthy fats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Does that help with depression and stuff, too? Like help people combat, like, their emotions because their brains are feeling more alert or just more it energetic? Can. It depends on where the person is because um, a lot of times with, like, depression or bipolar, you have – there's a chemical imbalance in your brain. Oh, okay. And so that can't always be helped with ne like um, vitamins and things like that, but they do help improve your, um, um, they help improve your performance, but they don't take it away, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you, you're also a specialist with anxiety. So I wanted to bring up meditation and we have a discussion about that too. Mm -hmm. What is your thoughts, Barbara? And then we'll go to Beth and then Kathy on that. I love meditation. <laughs> it's like there was a study done in one of the schools, I think it was a middle school, that decided to eliminate, eliminate detention and started implementing meditation instead. Oh. And I thought that was awesome because it teaches, it's a coping mechanism. It teaches you how to look internally, how your body's feeling. So it teaches you how to determine where the emotion, because emotions are, not just coming from your brain. You can actually feel them in your body. You can feel where happiness is. You can feel where sadness is. You can feel um, anxiety where it sits. Um, so meditation teaches you how to do that. So you're reflecting on where you feel the emotion in your body. You're reflecting on your thoughts. You're reflecting on just life in general and just situations and how to process through those. So it's an awesome, awesome, awesome coping mechanism. Wow, that, that, that really is. Beth, what are your thoughts on meditation and how can people who have a hard time meditating, um, like me, <laughs> who are like kind of hyper and sitting still is tough, what, what, what are some, what's some advice you have for people who say, yeah, I'd love to meditate, but oh my gosh, I just can't do it more than a minute, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, at first off, I think there's, um, there's many different types of meditation. So it's important that people try mm -hmm. different things to find out what works for them. Some people need a guided meditation that actually gives their brain something to do. Other people need to quiet and still um, completely go into that blank space. You know, there's different types of meditation mm -hmm. for different people. There's a lot of great apps out there, like the Calm app or Headspace, that you can use to help you meditate. But meditation can also be simple, as simple as closing your eyes. And for 90 seconds, doesn't have to be long at all, just for 90 seconds, just release, you know, repeat release over and over and over again. And visualize or feel or imagine the tension and the stress draining out of your body. Um, or to Barbara's point, um, you know, focus on within the body, going within, and where do I feel this emotion? What does it look like? How would I describe it? Um, so that you're you're actually directing the mind, because when the anxiety is there, your your brain's all over the place, and the emotion gets triggered by the thoughts. And mm -hmm. so then it's like you've got your your emotional, you've got your mental fatigue going on because the the brain's like wired but tired, <laughs> you know, it's all over the place. And then you get the emotional fatigue on top of it, and it just becomes this chain reaction in the body. So when you can give the brain something to do, if it needs to do something and direct it, the guided meditation works really well. Um, but again, it depends. I really recommend people try all different types of meditation because different things are going to work for different people. And is guided meditation, this is one, I do definitely respond better to guided meditation, but I always felt like it wasn't real meditation. Like you're supposed <laughs> to just be, is it equal? The guided meditation, would you say it's so. the same? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's good to know because I always said, oh, I'm not doing it right, you know? Right. <laughs> well, and that's a whole other thing that just makes the anxiety go up is there's the pressure to get it right. And it's, <laughs> that's why it's like you got to start with what works for you, mm -hmm. and you can then work yourself into other types of meditation as well. You can go deeper with it. But when you put the pressure on top of yourself to get it right um, and to go to that place of, you know, the space between the space, <laughs> oh, which oh. <laughs> I know when I first started meditating and I was told that's where I was supposed to go. I'm like, oh, my God, my anxiety was through the roof because I couldn't get there. Yeah, it's very it's very the only thing I noticed that I can meditate and I mean, for maybe two to three minutes a day, but one minute at a time is my Apple watch, the breathe app on the watch that yep. goes. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen it? 
I can mm-hmm. do that for one minute. But like if, if I had to do that for like three minutes, I'd probably go stir crazy. But one minute, like in the morning, one minute in the afternoon, and one minute before bed, I do it. So I do get three minutes in. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's a start, right? <laughs> it's, it's a start, and those things add up. And then when you can try and make it cumulative and work at it um, little by little, I mean, I do now at least 20 minutes in the morning. But wow. in the beginning, I mean, getting a minute in was good. And mm-hmm. if I had tried to go for 20 minutes at first, I just – it, the frustration level would have been unbearable. So mm-hmm. just start with one minute. The more that is one amazing, minutes 20 in. minutes. That is fantastic. Yep. And do you do guided or you do just straight meditation for 20 minutes? I now do the, I now do the silent meditation. But when I wow. started, I mean, it's taken me four years now to get to this place. You know, there's other people out there who can meditate for an hour, two hours. I'm definitely not there. One day I'd love to go on one of those silent meditation retreats, uh, do Vipassana where you go for seven days at a time, silent meditation. I'm working my way up to that. (laughs) Well, you're on your way. 20 minutes is great. I'm very impressed. (laughs) That's fantastic. And Kathy, what about you? Do you you incorporate meditation as well? I do. And I encourage all women to do it too. And I totally am with um, Beth and Barbara. You have to start little. With any change you're making, you have to start little. So that Mm -hmm. one minute of quiet, just to try and quiet your mind, and it can just, I I usually encourage them just the deep breathing because then it gives them a focus to do something, you know, breathe in and out, um, you know, down to the um, that belly breath. But it doesn't matter, just that minute or two, and then, you know, eventually you will grow into more time. And yes, I do about 20 minutes a day too, but it, it wasn't, it never started that way. I'm, I would never encourage somebody to say, okay, now go to meditate for 20 minutes because first of all, we're busy women. We don't have 20 minutes. But once you do it for one or two and it, maybe then you get up to five, you know, then you start to really say oh, it, it, the time goes fast. And so then you realize, and you're reaping the benefits of it too, because you just finally, at first you're kind of, you know, well, is it really that helpful? But then you notice, and and I encourage the gratitude at the same time, you just start feeling better, and you do, you have more energy. And so, and so then it's just, you can compound it. Or, you know, I also encourage people to think about it in the evening, just one or two minutes. I like women to take and before you climb into bed, write down three things that you were sick. And I don't use the word successful. Three wins for your day. What were the three wins you had today? Because most women look at what they didn't get done. They go to bed with this laundry list of, oh, I wish I could have gotten this, this, and this done. And so now look at where that puts your mind when you're going to sleep when it's supposed to be you know getting that rest and that 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 healing process that it needs but yet we have all this negative energy going on so instead if we take and write down our three wins for the day now you're going to bed with more of that wow that sense of accomplishment and and you're feeling more grateful and and like uh, more abundant and so it's important how we Start and end our day can really determine how the next, how our day is going to run, but also how the next day is going to start and run. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so that is a great idea. Three wins before bed and three gratitude things to be grateful in the morning. Barbara, do you want to add some, some more tips here for for, for these, you know, you've got some, there you go. (laughs) Tiny little thing. Um, So if you guys have ever heard of Insight Timer, a coworker mm-hmm. turned me on to it. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's a free. What is that? It's a free app, and they have all kinds of guided meditations on it. So anything a- from stress, anxiety, oh. um, happiness, manifestation, anything that you can possibly think of, they they have a topic on it, and it's anywhere from like a couple minutes up to like over an hour. And and, and what is this called again? Insight, like in- insight time, insight yeah. timer, like an insight. All- it's only free for a certain amount of time, isn't it? Because I ran out. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't ran. I haven't ran out yet, so I don't How know. How long have you been doing it? Um, for a couple weeks. Okay, you probably haven't quite hit the spot yet. 
Okay. I actually, my goodness, it's, I must it's have a downloaded great place, this. It's a great place to start. It really is. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and is there's, there's, like you said, there's so many different areas there that you can use. Yeah. So just so everybody knows, because um, sometimes it's hard to hear, it's insight, like an insight timer. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'll just show you here on my phone. It's just put this up to the camera. This is on the Apple phone here on the iPhone store. They probably have it also, uh, but we, maybe we could put that in the comments too. Um, the insight. It's, it says meditation helps you sleep. There's six million meditators. So I must have. It's funny because it says open. I, I think I've downloaded this once before. <laughs> and one of, my, one of my millions of like you see my pages and pages of apps, I'm, <laughs> which is terrible. It's like new app, you know. I got to keep yeah. track of them all. But I'm going to go back to that now. Thank you, Barbara, because mm -hmm. that anything these type of tools to help us to keep us on on track. We need that extra little help, um, you know, to have these little little tools. I actually shared, um, but you got in one of our recent videos when I do the get it done in five minute videos for the standout online members and for women helping women premium. There was, um, and I'll just share with everybody here. I just think I just posted this morning. There's a Chrome extension and it's called um, Pixel P I X E L Challenge. And it gives you like little squares. So you put what you want to do. Say, I want to meditate 20 minutes a day or five minutes a day. And each day you do it, you fill in the little square and it gives you like a little box. So it adds up across your screen. Oh. which I thought was so cool because you can make your habits like Kathy was saying, you know, if you each night that you, maybe you're great, you put the three things that your wins. Well, I did that. Now I can go to my screen and I can get my little colored box and then it'll that. be like a streak of things. So you guys all can watch the video I did on it. Cause you guys are all in our private group. Everyone else who's not in the group, they can just go to pixel challenge Chrome extension. It's for Chrome. Um, uh, but I show you guys in the video how to use it. And I think it's, yeah, something like that ties into what, what we're talking about is that whole little mm -hmm. tracking, keeping, you know, I want to walk five minutes a day or I want to, you know, do anything you want to do. But to give you that visual, to get excited, to say, oh, I get to make my little colored box and add to my, you know, my little screen of boxes that I completed that for the day. Love that. So I think that's I think that's great. These these type of tips that you guys are sharing are fantastic. Beth, do you have any tips that like anything you want to share that would be really helpful for us to get some more energy or keep on yeah. track? Or... A, a couple. And actually, Kathy had mentioned Ooh. breath when she was talking about meditation, and it triggered um, breath for me in in another way. Um, I definitely believe breath with meditation as well, but. Um, breath in general is really important for energy. So again, you think like a plant, <laughs> you need water. To Kathy's point, you need a lot of water. Hydration is the, usually dehydration is the first sign, sign of fatigue. Um, or fatigue is the first sign of dehydration, sorry. <laughs> um, but also lack of oxygen. We are chronically under oxygenated as a society because most of us are just not breathing deep enough. So being able to take deep breaths throughout the day, you can even do breath work, um, but really being able to breathe down into the abdomen, open it up, not just the shallow breathing in the chest, which is where most of us are breathing, because that oxygenates the blood and you can get a real flow and boost of energy that way. Um, I also like to do Qigong. Um, Qigong in the morning or Qigong throughout the day, you can stimulate your, your body's energy system just by doing a quick one to two minute Qigong exercise. It can really get the energy flowing. Um, and it's amazing the difference it can have on your chakras. Um, what is that exactly? Qigong so is, is um, yeah, so Qigong and Tai Chi are both energy work, forms of energy work that you can do. So there's, there's all chi. different extensive um, exercises that you can do, but it's about being able to actually feel energy Sorry, you can't see my hands, but actually being able to feel energy and stimulate your energy system, so like your chakras, and not just your chakras, it's, it's the entire energy system, but really being able to stimulate the energy throughout your body. Um, it's amazing. One of the best um, energies that I, or Qigong exercises that I do that, I call it the body buzz. I'm sure that there's a whole other name for it that's correct, but I call it the body buzz, and it's um, starting... You start at your ankles and work your way up, but clapping really hard against your legs. Work all the way up your left leg, all the way up your right leg, then on the sides, each side, and then starting at the, the hands and working your way up here, 
same thing on the other side and then bend over in the back of the, the um, lower back. There's a huge energy opening there. And you're using your hands like clapping pretty firmly against it. You do this exercise, you do that whole routine about two to three minutes and then just kind of close your eyes and bounce in place and you can feel this incredible buzz throughout your body. And it's wow. like an energy endorphin rush in your body. It's amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. Now, do, have you made any videos on this or do you know of any like YouTube videos that we can maybe I, post in the comments? I haven't. Or... I can look for some YouTube videos specifically oh, though excellent. for Qigong um, yeah, exercises yeah. because that's just one exercise. There's so many other ones, but wow. um, it really, it's an amazing rush of energy. And like I said, these are two to three minutes. That's all it takes. Um, wow, it takes two, great. To, you know, two, one, one to three minutes to calm your mind two to three minutes to boost your energy. So no matter what you need during the middle of the day, if you've got the energy crash, just boost your energy up with a quick Qigong exercise. If you're overstimulated and anxious, you can just calm down in one to two minutes. You can manage your energy throughout the day in these different ways. Um, oh, and I'm I not a nutritionist that. or a dietitian or anything like that, but I've learned to eat for my energy and eat for my vibration. So before I go to eat anything now, I don't do diets at all. I'm not a vegetarian or anything like that, but I look at everything that I'm about to put into my mouth and I look at the energy of it. And I ask myself, how am I gonna feel when I eat this? Before it goes in my mouth, I, I mean, I never used to be able to turn down chocolate or sugar, I was a sugar addict, but sugar has such a numbing effect on my energy but now I don't even want it. I don't go anywhere near it. And wow. that's all I did was change what, I took the moment to stop before I put it into my mouth and ask myself and look at it and feel the energy off of it. If I couldn't feel any energy off of it, it doesn't go in my body. Wow, isn't that, that's interesting. I have never heard of that, of actually asking yourself before you, and it's it's funny too, I guess because food too also ties in a lot with like emotions. Like now if you mm -hmm. put ice cream in front of me and you're gonna say, how am I gonna feel eating that ice cream? I'm gonna say, oh my gosh, I'm gonna feel really great because I love ice cream. <laughs> Even though other people wouldn't, you know, it's not really energetically just for me because I have this thing with ice cream, which I don't eat but, all the time, but, but when I do, I love ice cream. One's an emotion and one's an actual feeling. Mm -hmm. and they're two okay. different things. Right, and so, so like you can know it's going to be a healthy thing, getting into the vibration. Like, you know, when you eat a strawberries or a watermelon or a fruit, that's going to energetically be better for your body than a piece yeah, of Yeah, it's being able to distinguish between the emotion and the energy. Ah, it's there you go. Two different things. They're two different things. Right. Two different one's events. A, they could feel the same, but they're different, right? Yeah, one's a reaction of the brain and one's a reaction in the body. And, you know, it's the brain that's the wiring that's off when you're using something like um, sugar for the high, that's just a, right. a brain chemical reaction that you're getting. Whereas you're not really, instead, you're actually gonna have the complete fatigue and crash after you eat it and feel like crap. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. two different things that you're talking about is being able to stop and distinguish the difference. That's fascinating, right? The difference between what's going to energetically vibrate with your body energetically wise, as opposed to conditioning. Like some people overeat because of the, or eat because they're unhappy. Some people yeah. eat when they're happy. Um, it's all, you know, tied to our childhood and everything, what we associate with different foods, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, so getting rid of that and getting to the basics, just about the food itself, how it's vibrating, forget all the other stuff is what you're saying is to really feel into the energy of the actual food. Very yeah, well, these this I, has been fantastic. How do I really want to feel after I eat this? Like feel, not emotional. Yeah. Feel. The body is going to feel. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, there's really a new way of thinking about things here. Definitely. This is fantastic. So, you know, I wanted to ask you guys too, as we just continue on, and we're talking about energy. Another thing that affects people's health um, is lack of sleep. And I think a lot of women <laughs> struggle, especially when we get into, you know, over our 30s and up and, I know we have younger women in the group as too probably sleep better than we do when we're in our 40s and 50s. But um, <laughs> the sleep is an issue, getting up, waking up at night and then feeling so tired. And so um, any suggestions? We'll start with Kathy and then Barbara and then Beth. Any suggestions for better sleep? Well, I think what, um, first of all, I just want to say one more thing on the energy, if you don't mind. Um, and that has to do with strengthening. 
uh, mm -hmm. because I think women need to realize that once they turn 40, they lose a half a pound of muscle a year, whether they're dieting or not. If they're dieting, they're losing a whole lot more. Um, and so as women, it is important that we think of ways to strengthen our body. And there again, it can be simple one and two minute, you know, functional activities um, and just really getting in touch with our body. I encourage people in the morning, stretch, because if you stretch now, all of a sudden you're in touch with your body and you'll start thinking about your body a tad bit more. So anyway, so I think that um, the one thing that I would love to have women think about too is simple ways to strengthen their muscles too, um, because then that will help keep your muscles um, firm and and they won't be wasting and you will that helps keep your metabolism up too. So as far as sleep, I think that's really important, especially as you say, women you know tend to get to a point where sleep can be a little more difficult or challenging. And there, I think we do need to stop. And I know that for me and for a lot of the women that I coach, if they, it, how you go to bed often, what you go to bed with, and I don't mean the person that's in bed with you, but all the other junk that's going on inside your mind or body. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Um, once we go to whatever we're taking to bed with us will affect how we sleep. Uh -huh. So if we go to bed by having a calming practice before we get there, instead of, you know, checking your Facebook and email for the last time before you hit the pillow or maybe hit the pillow and then still keep checking it, you know, that's not going to be setting ourselves up for sleep. It's going to keep that brain really trying to be awake. And so there again, if we have a little two to five minute, I want to say time to ourselves to write out our three wins for what we did well and be basically being more grateful to that, it also helps us then focus upon, you know, what are the three things maybe I want to accomplish tomorrow, but but I don't go there until after you're done with being able to at least put down your wins um, because now you can go and have a more relaxing sleep. And there again, I you can also, as you're going to sleep, there's a lot of wonderful music out there that helps induce deep sleep or for women that wake up in the middle of the night that you can put that music on and it'll help bring that energy back down into that deep sleep um, area too. And that's not my specialty. It's just a thing that I know that if you can calm yourself better before you go to bed, that you will get a better night's sleep and probably have more minutes in deep sleep than if you go to bed with the weight of the world on your shoulders. That's good advice. So, you know, I, I think everybody should get a little booklet to keep a little uh, journal or something to keep at the bedside, you know, to put those wins in and uh, morning gratitude. Because if you do it on your phone, you're just going to get caught into the notifications are going to pop up and then you're going to be like flying off of your win uh, notes to uh, back to Facebook, right? So having and, a physical is probably better for that. <laughs> and, and you know that when we hand write them down on paper, our brain and body, and you probably know better than this far than I, but you will actually feel it more than if you're typing it on your computer or on your phone. And there are studies around that. So when you're really like setting out your goals and stuff, if they are handwritten, it just is more, it's, it absorbs into your probably unconscious mind better than if you're just typing them out on your computer. Hmm. Very interesting. Excellent. Barbara, what do you say about all this and about sleep and everything? What tips do you have? So I work with a lot of clients that have anxiety and sleep for them is super hard because you can usually distract yourself throughout the day because you're doing things. You're act, your, mind, your mind is active, your body is active. When you lay down and your mind is still active, then it's a problem, right? So what I do, what I teach people is to establish a sleep routine. You want to establish, you want to quiet the mind, you want to quiet the body, and you do that by 
doing the calming activities that Kathy was talking about. So either whether it's taking a bath, whether it's sitting with a weighted blanket, whether it's listening to something that um, calms you, whether it's ocean waves, um, rain, forest sounds, what, whatever it is that calms you. Uh, for me, it's an audiobook. So I like to listen to an audiobook in the background, something I've heard a billion times, but it's familiar and it's something that calms. So, um, and then you want to limit your phone time, shut off all electronic devices an hour before you go to bed, because that gives your brain enough time to calm down. Because when you're in front of a screen, you're, it's a different type of concentration. So you need to give yourself time and space to, um, to calm your brain down away from electronics. If that makes sense. <laughs> That's great oh, advice. And I, I love the weighted blanket. I haven't tried one and I really want to buy one. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Have you had, do you have one, Barbara? Uh, we use one in the office and tech, uh, a, a weighted blanket should be 10% of your body weight. Okay. So um, you can get them from Target. You can get them from <laughs> um, online. Uh, Target is actually not that unreasonable. I think it's oh, like I didn't know they had it at Target. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. I've seen them on like Amazon and stuff. I've seen advertisements for them and I never know like, well, which one's the good one to get. But I guess they're all basically have the same function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can even wow. make your own too. You can make your own too. Wow. What do you have to, like, how do you put weights in there? <laughs> Maybe. So um, you put together the blanket and it's removable weights. So, and it's based off of, it's individualized. So you can get it based off of whatever body weight you are, it's 10%. So if you're 140 pounds, it's 14 pounds. And you can, and ideally the ones that have the removable weights are, I think more sanitary because <laughs> you can actually wash them, <laughs> take the weights out and you wash the blanket. Um, That's a smart idea to get by one that has removable weights. Mm -hmm. That's where you can wash, yeah, because you're going to want to wash the blanket. That makes sense, right? You can't wash it if it's got big, like, metal weights in there clunking around your, your washer and dryer, right? <laughs> that's not going to work. So that is great advice. So, Beth, what what are your thoughts about sleep? And then I know we're over our time, so then I want you all to, um, when you're done, Beth, after, just tell us um, your website and everywhere we can reach you, and we'll go through for everybody so we can everybody can contact you afterwards. Awesome. Yep. Big on the sleep thing, too. Um, I would also add that it's not just the amount of sleep that you're getting. You know, most of us, we hear eight hours of sleep. Um, that depends a little bit on the individual, but try and sleep in 90-minute cycles at least. So seven and a half hours or nine hours would be ideal because that's your sleep cycle. If you're waking up off of a sleep cycle, you're actually, your cycle is like disturbed, right? So it's impacting you. So if you can get it seven and a half hours or nine hours, that would be more ideal. And I'm a person, now there be, there's gonna be people out here who don't wanna hear this, but there is something to the time that you go to bed. So the hours of 10 to two are considered the healing hours for your body and for the, body, for the organs and the regeneration of your organs and your body. So if you can get to bed at least by 10 p.m. Now I was always a person who was, never went to bed before midnight for years. And, and this was hard for me. And I used to blow it off saying, you know, I'm a night owl. I'm, that's just who I am. It's how I work. It's how I work best. But I could not believe the difference in my energy levels and how I felt by working my way back to 10 p.m. So now I do go to bed at 10 p.m. Um, and I'm, you know, waking up earlier because of it. But I just feel so much better. And so I would just encourage anyone who thinks they're a night owl, try this. And you have to right. kind of inch your way back. <laughs> Yeah, and then your way back to it. If you go to bed at midnight now, you know, start at um, 11. Start like 1. <laughs> one. Start at 12. I'm a very night owl, yeah. Like, inch your way back to it because it'll take some adjustment. I mean, you'll sit there for hours at first. I would also say um, try and keep your phone out of the bedroom completely. Mm, oh. I set my alarm and I have my phone in my bathroom, so I have to literally get up in the morning to go to it. Um, but that also prevents you from getting on your email right away. I don't touch email or my phone before 9 a.m. Um, because it's just, that's going to derail your entire day. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the messaging in the million yeah. places, everybody's popping in here, there, everywhere. <laughs> it's all going to be there at nine. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's good. That's excellent advice. Well, this, I'll tell you guys have been, I've learned so much from the three of you tonight. This has been absolutely amazing. I'm like, I wish I was just taking notes. I'm going to we watch this and, and take some, because we've got some phenomenal tips here. You guys have been fantastic. I think this is going to help so many people. So I just want to go around. We'll start again with you, Beth. Just tell us um, where everybody can reach you. And I also want you to put it in the comments. Um, also with your website and everything too, and how they can get a hold of you. And then yep. we'll do Kathy and then Barbara. Okay. So it's www.bethlarsoncoaching.com. So that's B-E-T-H-L-A-R-S-E-N coaching. Dot com. Excellent. Thank you, Beth. Kathy? And I'm Kathy Frost, and it's www.forgetdietsforever.com. Forgetdietsforever.com. <laughs> Pretty easy to remember. Love it. Can, That's a great name. Or you can email me at Kathy at forgetdietsforever.com. Kathy with a C. <laughs> Kathy with a C. <laughs> and Barbara? I'm Barb, and you guys can find me at www.creativespaceonlinecounseling.com. Creative, okay, and you guys are all going to put your links in there as well so that everybody can reach out to you and ask you any questions and put any questions in the comments, and if you guys can check the comments and answer anybody has any questions. But this has been really, really, truly amazing, and I want to thank you all for doing this tonight for us because – Health is so important, you know, as entrepreneurs, it's something we overlook and we really hit upon all of the major factors today that um, that people really need to know about. And it was just really, really great advice. So thank you so much. Good night, ladies. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to do it again. We'll definitely do another show like this again. Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye.